Throughout my travels these days, I seem to get recognized a lot. One of the main reasons is my trailer. But the second reason I'm recognized is a white Jeep Liberty. But you know, sometimes things have to change. And this is my last video with the white Jeep Liberty. Now don't get me wrong, it's done me well for a lot of years and a lot of places, but it is starting to fail. And one of my biggest concerns are these windows. As you can see, they're duct taped in place because without the duct tape, they just fall right down. The regulators broke. And although if you're a mechanic, that might be an easy thing to fix, but I'm not a mechanic and I don't do cars. I do duct tape instead. And there's that tiny little issue about the back door. Although I can shut this, I can't shut the window. Because the switch inside, I guess the solenoid's gone. That's why I've got a little Allen key, which I gotta just hit at the right spot, and down it comes. One other mild annoyance with this Jeep is the way the back is. With the tire on the back and the way the door opens, it interferes with the hitch. I can move the handle, but it doesn't give me much. I still can't get in there. So, I think I need a vehicle that's a little bit more trailer friendly. So besides a flat tire, a couple of times. It's not good. I had no major issues with this Jeep. Although there was one time that the uh, four wheel drive wasn't working very well. And so I had the drive shaft rebuilt, which cost me a bit of money. But when you think of the amount of, of miles I put on this thing in rough terrain, which I don't know what the final toll is, but it's got to be over 100,000 just for camping. It's done pretty good. Yes, my Jeep has got me through a lot of rough roads, even in winter. From freezing cold mountain air to the hot desert in California, the rugged Rocky Mountains of Colorado, the Arizona backcountry, and the New Mexico gullies. Somehow it stayed mostly in one piece and prevented me from slipping off muddy slopes in South Dakota or pasture land in Montana. Vehicles like people have an expiry date. So, you know, but, and some people sort of wonder, well, why do you choose these? old beaters. Why don't you buy a new vehicle? Budget. I am on a limited budget. I cannot afford to buy a brand new vehicle. And at my age, chances are it's not going to get any better. I have to live within my means. And so I don't buy the best vehicle. I buy the vehicle that suits my budget and I try to get the best vehicle I can for the amount that I can afford to pay. So when people ask me what's the best towing vehicle for an A-liner or a small trailer, tell me what your budget is and uh, I guess I can make some recommendations at least, but for me it's used vehicles. And it's just a matter of what to look for when you're buying a used vehicle. It might have looked okay at a distance, but up close you can see its battle scars. Rock chips and rust bleeding from its wounds. 
Chrome stripped off the rims. Yes, trail life for a Jeep has its limits. With its final workout in the wilds coming to an end, it seemed fitting to let this old cowboy ride off into the sunset one last time. So it's out with the old. And in with the new. To me, there's only one way to check a new vehicle out. That's to grab a strong cup of coffee, a road map, and hit the highway. Because it's road trip time. I'm sure you might wonder why I'd go out in a new tow vehicle to test it out and not bring the trailer. Well, there's a few things I haven't done yet on the trailer, so uh, I was a little bit fixed for time. And I wanted to try a real road trip with just a vehicle, no uh, trailer. For me to look for a new vehicle, it's not that easy because I'm pretty fussy as to what I can tow my Jeep with. It has to have reasonably good gas mileage. It has to have power. It has to have four wheel drive. That's essential. At least a six cylinder engine. And it has to have good towing power. The rest are just icing on the cake. But there is other one more thing that I need. And that is, it has to be something that I can afford. And so that's what really limits the options. I mean, there's some wonderful vehicles out there like uh, Forerunners, I guess a Land Rover, various SUVs. Trucks, like a pickup truck is not something I could work with, nor a van. It had to be, you know, a four wheel compact SUV with power. And so I did look and again it all came down to my budget but i think i made the right choice so i thought i'd take this opportunity i loaded up uh, just highway driving uh, i did bring a backpack and a tent however so if some real camping comes up where i can uh, do a trail and uh, hike in and camp I'm all for that, but this is kind of a no frills road trip. I didn't bring my Alpacool. I could have, but I didn't. So uh, won't be doing much cooking. It's gonna be road food. Well, I don't know about you, but cities and freeways can really drag you down. Just give me a stretch of open road and some countryside and I'm in hobo heaven. Well, nobody can ride the rails anymore, but you can at least just imagine that sense of freedom and adventure those old rounders must have found as they rode those ribbons of steel. But the thrill of a road trip are those unexpected surprises, sometimes beautiful and intense, while other surprises are not welcome at all.